Excel is a valuable tool to perform data regression. We're going to practice this with some heart rate data that is listed right here at this link. And we're going to import that into Excel spreadsheet, plot the data, and generate the regression using this correlation right here that's a function of time and these four coefficients, C0 through C3. So we're going to adjust those to fit the data. And then we'll also calculate uh, some basic statistics like an R-squared value. So let's go start just by looking at the data. Here we have our time and heart rate. Okay, and you can see the time is uh, starting and it goes in five second intervals. And we'll go all the way down to 1200 seconds, which is about 20 minutes. So this athlete is going to be starting off um, and we'll just track the heart rate and then fit it to this correlation. So let's open up Excel and I've copied that data. You can also just use this link that I'll include in the video description and uh, import it. So I'll go ahead and just select this right here. You can also copy paste into your Excel sheet. I'm going to go ahead and just do data and then import uh, the data from a web link. Okay, and just go ahead and paste that in there and click go. And it's going to show me the data and I'll click import. I'll import it into the existing worksheet. And it's going to go out and get the data. Now you'll see it's all in one column. So I need to go to text columns and delimited. And I'll separate this with a comma, not a tab in this case. Okay, so here is my data. If I want to resize, I can double click on these between them or select all of the columns and double click on one of them and it'll resize. So the very first thing that I need to do in here is go ahead and check out my uh, correlation that I want to fit this to. Okay, and let me go ahead and just resize some of these so I can see it on the same page. Okay, and I'll drag that one down. Okay, so I've got uh, I've got these. Let me make this just a little bit larger so we can see it better. Okay, so there's my measured heart rate and my time. And then I want to do a predicted uh, heart rate as well. That's also going to be beats per minute. Okay, and I'm going to use this correlation, uh, C0 through C3. Now I just want one value of those. So I'm going to go ahead and just select a couple of these, right-click, and insert. And I'll just do C0. 0, C1, C2, and C3. And let's go ahead and just start off with uh, values, you know, about 100 for these two. Now you'll notice the C3, if I put a really large number in there, that term is just going to eventually, you know, essentially go to 0. So let's go ahead and start off with, uh, you know, smaller values for these. Okay, so 0 0.01. And sometimes the how the solver, how the regression is going to work, depends on some of these initial conditions right here that you give. So you can actually get different solutions if you don't have good initial conditions. Uh, and we'll we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and construct our formula for the predicted heart rate, and that one is listed uh, right here in the beats per minute. So we're just going to translate that into an Excel formula. So that's going to be equal to C0. And then we hit the F4. Uh, no, it isn't F4 here. Uh, let me hit the function F4. OK, that's going to be uh, B1. It's going to put the dollar signs around this. It's going to fix it as I drag it down. So I want to fix those uh, references. And in Mac, it's, I believe, uh, Control T. OK, plus, and then we have C1. And I'll do um, C1 static reference. And then I'm going to have times time. OK, and here is our time variable. Now this one, I'm going to let it drag down, you know, change the reference as I, as I drag it down. And then I'll do subtract C2. I'll fix that reference times uh, the ex exponent, exponential of minus uh, C3, I'll fix that one, times T. Okay, so I've built my function. When I click Enter, I'll say that uh, this one is 
Okay, equal to zero right now. I have, um, you know, these values, kind of poor values right now, but let's go ahead and just fill this down and see what values it goes to. Okay, so there I can see some predicted values. And let's go ahead and just plot this as well. So I'll just go ahead and select that. You can hit the, um, the shift key and the control key. So it's going to start in A6, hold down control and shift and hit right once on the arrow key and then down. Okay, and you can see that it included the value there at the end. I can hold up the control key just holding the shift key and hit up by one. So that's the value, those are the values that I want to plot. And if you want to, you can also just go and remove this one um, if it's in the way. Okay, so I'm going to hold the control and shift, go right, and then up. And it's going to select all of my data in that table. And then I'll select home, or right next to home, there's insert. And let's just do a scatter plot. Okay, and if I just select this scatter plot here, it's going to have the predicted versus the measured. And I'll go ahead and just remove the chart title. You can add other things uh, here as well under the design. You can add chart element, such as a primary horizontal and primary vertical. Okay, so that's heart rate and beats per minute. And this is time. in seconds. Okay, let me remove that one. Okay, so I've got these two and I want to make them fit better. Uh, right now they don't fit very well, uh, so I can either adjust those myself or I can let an Excel solver do it for me. Okay, so let's say that was 200 instead, or let's say this was uh, 50 instead. I, you can see I'm maybe getting closer to the actual value if I, okay, so let's go 75 and then maybe increase that one to 150. Okay, so you can see I could adjust those myself and maybe get a little bit closer. But let's let's go ahead and, and do this in a more systematic way where we'll have Excel do this for us and with a solver, okay? So we're gonna use a solver to minimize uh, the difference between the predicted and the measured values. And so we need to create a new column that's going to allow us to tell us what the difference is, and then we'll use the solver to minimize that. So we'll have a squared uh, error column here. And if we just take the difference between the two, okay, and then square it, then that gives us a squared value between them. And if you just double click that uh, box right down below, it's gonna fill down that formula. And there you can see the error squared between them. And then we can calculate a sum of squared errors. And that is gonna be the sum, hit equal sum, and then um, D7, and then you can hit uh, you know, control shift and down and that's gonna select all of them in that range. Or what you could do is D7 to D247. So for example, if you just wanted to type that in yourself, uh, you could do that D7 to D247 or you know whatever it is. So you're gonna sum up all the values in those cells, and there is our sum of squared errors. So that's the thing that we wanna minimize. And so we can go over to data and then over on the very far right, there's solver. If that doesn't appear for you, then sometimes you need to come into, uh, the, go over here to file, and we can go down to options, and click add-ins, and you can go to Excel add-ins and click go. We need to add the solver, so just make sure that one is selected for solver add-in. And then when you go back to data, you'll see that solver is right here. If you had that highlighted, it says that D4 is my objective. And I want to set it to a minimum value. I don't want to set it to a zero value because I might not be able to get a perfect fit. And I want to change these cells right here. 
Now, one of the things that we need to do is unselect this to make unconstrained variables non-negative. So allow them to go negative, and you can add constraints here if you want. We'll just stick with the GRG nonlinear, and there are different options you can use as well, such as the convergence tolerance and other things. Okay, and we'll click solve. Here's the it says the solvers converge to a current solution. All constraints are satisfied. So there's some different reports there that you can look at. Okay, and if you want to, I just want to see the solution here. Let's go ahead and scale this just a little bit, just so we can see it better. I'll start with 100 and go to 160. Okay, now you can see our fit, that we're fitting a lot better. We have our predicted versus our measured value. And so you can see in our measured value, we have a little bit of random variation there. But overall, it fits pretty well. But now we want to calculate perhaps some statistics like an R squared value. R squared value, if it's closer to one, then it's going to be a better fit. So we can do that with Excel with the RSQ function. And we just want to take our predicted and our measured values. So the known Y's and known X's. Doesn't matter which order you put this in. I'll hit uh, Control Shift and then down. And then I'll hit comma. And then the next data that I need is right here and Control Shift up. And then I'll take my finger off the Control key and just holding the Shift key, press down by one. Okay, so there's my R squared value. Let's go ahead and see what that is. It looks like it's a 0.993. So uh, that's an indication that it's a fairly good fit. So here's my sum of squared errors. It, the solver minimizes the sum of all of these to make the model and measured values line up. And there you can see just a basic statistic there, which is the R squared. So this approach applies to almost any type of correlation that you can put here in this column. And then you just take a difference between the two and square it, sum up all of those, and then use solver to minimize the sum of squared errors by changing the parameters that you can adjust. Okay, and you could also use others' uh, objectives as well. Let's say you want to do some of absolute values instead. Okay. And then fill that one down. Okay, and that'd be the sum of absolute error. Right there, I don't need to change anything because I'm still summing that up. And I'm going to get a slightly different solution if I do the sum of absolute errors instead. So same optimization problem, just slightly different values right here. Okay, that concludes this tutorial on regression, and we use some heart rate data to be able to um, exercise this method of fitting models to data.